Do you want to talk about last night? Why? It won't make any difference. Give me a try. It all started when my friend Carly found an old disc about camping. You know, the real stuff. About the real land. The disc talked about the camping fire and sing-around songs. We borrowed a crawler and drove out to one of the remote generator buildings. We couldn't light a fire, but we plugged a crawler heater into one of the battery outlets and got close to keep warm. I'm freezing. Whose idea was this? Yours. Power drain. I remember thinking how much I liked being there. Away from the colony and the machines. Just me and my friends. What else did they do on the disc, Carly? They burned rations over a fire, which seemed kind of dumb. And sometimes they... Sometimes they told stories. Scary stories. Carly went first. It was something about vampires, witches, and monsters. I know it was straight out of the disc library, but it didn't matter. With the wind and the rain and the hum of the heater, it was as scary as any video. And then, he drank all of her blood. God, I hate vampires. Shh. About then, the heater stopped working. Maybe it was a short. Everything turned cold and blue and I started to shiver. Your turn, new. What's the scariest thing you ever saw? No. I want to go back. It was your idea, Newt. Don't chicken out now. I knew if I didn't tell, they'd never go back. Okay, okay. I know a story about a real scary witch and- A witch? Don't be stupid. You know something scarier than that. Tell us. Please. Can't we go back? Tell it. I started to get mad at them, picking on me like that. All I wanted to do was go home. I decided to tell them the scariest story I knew. There are these... things that live in space. They live to feed to hate. Better. They have acid for blood and skin as hard as whole steel. You don't see them until they're right on top of you. And then all you see are the teeth, glittering like sparks as they snap. Maybe they're from another world. Or maybe they just exist in the black hell of space, feeding on anything they find. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters but those teeth snapping shut on bone and brain. Tearing, cutting, crushing. But it doesn't end in death. They use what's left for breeding, burrowing into the tissue, spreading like cancer, until the parasite is whole, until the hate can build again and again and again. I, I don't feel so good. Mag, what's wrong? Something is... Uh, uh, ah! Oh God, no. I don't feel... Not again! Not again! I guess that's when you found me in the hall screaming. Newt, wake up, you're dreaming. If you're feeling better, I'll loosen the straps. You can do anything you want. It won't stop the dreams. Nothing can stop the dreams. Nothing can stop the dreams. They're all around us, man! They've got Drake and Vasquez pinned in the generator station, Hicks. Knock it off. Stick together and we'll get through this. The Infrost will take front. Quinn, lay down some kick-ass cover. The rest of you ease around back. We're gonna outflank these mothers. Outflank these mothers. Jasper! Honey, I'm gonna have the private take you to the- Don't leave me! It's going to be fine, I'll be back. Die, die, die! You get out of this, Hicks, and I'm buying you a drink. When we get out of this, you're buying me the whole damn refinery. Okay, on my count. One, two, three! Cross! Vasquez, Drake! They're both dead. Something inside them. Frost? Ellis, Quinn! Give me a fix on your position. There's something damn strange and help me, Hicks. Don't leave me. No, no. Hicks, front and center. Give it a rest, Perkins. I still got 24 hours to serve on the D&D charges. As you wish, pal. Much as I'd like to slam you back for another cycle, your high-ranking friends have other plans. It's about time. I'm not safe with him in here. I don't have any high-ranking friends. He's sick, man. You don't know what he's got inside him. Sounds like you don't have any friends, period. Watch the disc and report to Colonel Stevens at 0800. Hell, maybe you can even try and look like a soldier. I'll try if you try. I knew it was a bad sign when Perkins opened the cell. I learned a long time ago, nobody gets out on a limb unless they want something. Somebody must have wanted me bad. They still call them the Coast Guard, even though the coast they are guarding is three or four billion miles out in space. It was a lot cheaper to abandon a ship than retrofit and refuel, especially the old style nuclear jobs. A lot of the industrials just dumped them in the decaying orbit waiting for gravity and the atmosphere burn-up to solve their problem. That worked until one of the flamers crashed half intact near a coffee plantation on the island of Hawaii. The radiation killed the indigenous population and made it damn near impossible to find a good cup of Kona. 
So now the Coast Guard tags the floaters and blasts them before they can decay into the atmosphere. Keeps the world safe and gives the guard boys something to do between poker games. Probes away. See that, Lyle? The door's bulging out. It's like somebody's trying to blow it from the inside. Yeah. And the pilot's pot is gone, too. That's crazy. That's a dry dock port. Open that in space and it's bye-bye atmosphere. Three, two, one. Kapow. Good shot. Take her in. Oh, Jesus. Stupid bastard wasn't even wearing a pressure suit. Like he was committing suicide. Hurried up. This thing's starting to heat up. Is that blood? I think that's blood, man. I've seen this before. It's like mega claustrophobia or something. One guy snaps and takes the rest with him. Finally got a read on the vessel. Standard Type 5. Nuke engines. Old style transmitter. Did a lot of deep space time. Total bucket. No wonder they ditched it. Wait a minute. I'm getting something on the motion detector. Look at those holes. What the hell does that? Three meters. and closing. We don't have time for mysteries. Hole temperature's up another 50 degrees. It's gonna start flaring any second. Back off! Back off! It's just a cargo carrier, man. We must have jolted it when we burned the airlock. Look, the manual says check for salvage. I don't see any salvage, okay? So plant the damn nukes and dust the damn thing. Wait a minute. I'm picking up something else. Right on top of the probe. The whole ship's probably crawling with automates. Come on, move it. Did we get a complete history from the onboard? I think command's gonna want to see some hard copy on this tub. I pulled everything in the queue. I'd better do it. Because as they say down south, hasta la vista. Probe, 20 meters and closing. Damn, these controls are sluggish. Yeah, that's why we still have jobs. Compensate, boy. Compensate. 10 meters and close. Too fast. Slow it down for Christ's sakes. I'm trying. Something's inhibiting the left retro. Airlock doors open. I'm kicking some tech ass if they messed with the retro system. What in the hell? It's impossible. That's total vacuum. And it's alive. This is probe ship Dutton. We've... We pulled something in from... Maybe it's some kind of parasite, or... That's no parasite. Oh my god, it's going to... I knew it was only a matter of time before it happened. That's why the Marines never kicked me out of the Corps. They knew it too. I saw a guy tear a suit once. He had time for one scream. And his blood began to boil. All things considered, those boys on the Coast Guard ship were lucky. Probe ships weren't designed to withstand hull beach. The alien was clever, but not that clever. The ship exploded, taking the alien son of a bitch with it. But proof of the one meant there were more. What was that old phrase? Where there's smoke, there's fire? Yeah. Fire's a hell. Excerpts from the book, The Evolution of Television by Emmett Webster, DH Press, 2057. Commercial television, as it was known in the 1980s and 1990s, disappeared with the application of superconductive transmission technology to the then-existent television cable systems. You're late. Get off my back, Salvaje. You're lucky I'm here at all. Between this shit and my day job, it's lucky I find time to sleep. The cause is far more important than your sleep. Yeah, that's what they all say. With systems offering 500, then 1,000, and eventually 5,000 channels, it became economically infeasible for advisors to support mainstream dramatic programming. Soon, instead of hundreds and thousands of viewers, audience shares were calculated in the tens. With the dissolution of the FCC, cable access was open to all persuasions. In a resurgence similar to that seen during the mid-1980s, religious programming became a television staple, outnumbering non-doctrinal programs nearly 100 to 1. Jeez, this thing's an antique. It must weigh two or three pounds. Be careful. It took months to locate. I'll set it on a medium shot. You win the backdrop. Pretty dull stuff compared to the sound massage and subliminals your competition's been using. The truth of my message will shine like a beacon. The others are pretenders. I preach the gospel of the true messiah. It's your money. Get ready. I should have you on in a couple minutes. With so many programs to choose from, viewer perceptions change. Much as the fast cut visual styles of the 90s were defined by five, then two second commercials, the style of mid-century program was changed with the introduction of the retinal switch, or iBox. I know there are others with the vision, others who have heard the call these past few months. The iBox was designed to detect minute changes in the capillaries of the retina, initiating random changes based on involuntary blood pressure fluctuations. To hold audiences, 
programmers were forced to devise new styles of programming that would not trip the iBox switcher. It's okay, Doc. I hooked a guy up last week who said that the Messiah was playing third base for the Osaka Pistons. Doesn't matter to me. But that thing's God. Give me that old-time religion. Hi, Newt. Check out Dee Dee. She's averaging 50 switches a- Hey! Great. Can't even walk straight. I want you to join our... Dr. Hill's got you blued again, doesn't he? That's the treatment, isn't it? Bad dreams? Sedatives. Can't eat? Sedatives. Talk out of turn? Sedatives. Compassion and love and... You have to be strong, Newt. In a couple of months, you'll get your hearing and I'll never make it. Everything's slipping away. Memory control. Can't even walk. Get your attention. For the new world of... The doctors can't figure me out. I didn't do anything. I just don't get along. Is that crazy? Newt, no, they're gonna hear. I didn't ask to be born out there. Nobody warned me about the risks. The Church of the Immaculate Incubation. You can't get it out of me with drugs. I saw them tear my mother apart like a doll. And they're still out there! Seeks the ultimate communion with the true. Freeze it. There. What was that old slogan? The Marines want to make a few good men? I really believed that kind of shit when I signed on. That was before REM. Before I came home. I hadn't been off base in years. Didn't take long to remember why. Lance Corporal Hicks to see Colonel Stevens. Oh. I mean, I'm sorry. They're expecting you. I heard about Stevens. Special projects man. He had zip combat experience, but fancied himself a real warrior. Easy to do in peacetime. Corporal Hicks? I'm glad you could make it down. At ease. He kept his hands behind his back, afraid to touch me. I take it you've seen the disc on the Dutton? Yes, sir. Then you know. I understand you have some experience in these matters. Doctor, please, let me handle this. Well, is it true? Yes, sir. You could say that. I was part of a detachment sent to investigate loss of contact with a terraformer colony on the planet Rim. The command suspected there was an alien presence involved. The colony had been ransacked. We found a single survivor, a young girl named Newt. The rest of the colonists were dead. Before the squad could affect dust off, we were forced to engage the alien enemy in close quarters. Other than myself, a civilian woman, and the young girl, no one from the mission survived. Survival is such a relative term, Corporal Hicks. I've been reading your file. You had a sterling record prior to the REM mission. Since your release from medical, this seems to have changed. Sir, I wasn't aware that my record was a subject to this dissolution. Colonel, please, may I have a few moments with the Corporal, alone? Much better. I feel stifled by military ignorance, don't you? Look, whatever your name is, you want to talk about those alien bastards? Fine. But I don't see how my record is pertinent to. My name is Arona, and it's entirely pertinent. Perhaps a review is in order. In the course of your mission to Rim, you suffered severe acid burns. Deep and quite disfiguring. <laughs> Once back on Earth, you spent several months in quarantine waiting to be cleared into general populace. There was considerable concern over the infectious nature of the alien spore. According to the hospital reports, you didn't have a single visitor during the entire period. When you were finally reinstated to active duty, there seems to have been problems in readjusting to military life. Former comrades, fearful you might somehow be infectious from the alien blood, avoided contact. Your later record is painfully repetitive. Drunk and disorderly, brawling, public intoxication. Really quite disappointing. Uh, oh God, no! Don't touch me! Don't touch me! I'm a geneticist, Corporal. It doesn't require a psychologist to see a pattern in this self-destructive behavior. All of it stemming from the Rim mission. What the hell do you want from me? Before them Coast Guard fools destroyed themselves, they managed to transmit the data banks from the derelict to our ground station. We have the entire inboard history, including course trajectories. You seek redemption. I seek... specimens. She's dreaming again. What did you give her? Standard therapy. 30 milligrams of trinamine. Doesn't make any sense. Dreams are getting worse. We may have to up the dosage. Is that wise? Much higher and you'll run the risk of permanent brain damage. It's a trade-off, isn't it? Newt! Wake up, you have a visitor. What? Room four. Look, Newt, do you want me to come in with you? 
I'll be okay. Thanks, Sash. You have ten minutes. You are being monitored. Any discussion of hospital therapy or treatment will result in termination of visitation and suspension of privileges. Is this understood? Yeah, sure. Enjoy your visit. Newt, I... I had to see you. Hicks? There isn't much time, and you're the only one who really understands. I've been thinking. Dreaming. Your face. The aliens. They found the homeworld. I'm going out, Newt. I'm going back. Take me with you. You don't mean that. I shouldn't have come here. Can't you see? They're killing me. The drugs and the dreams. They're taking my mind. What do you mean? What are they doing to you? Hey! Leave her alone, damn it! I don't want to die here! Help me, Hicks, please! Leave her alone! You saved me once, please! Please don't leave me! Visitation period is over. Please exit through the rear door. Newt! I'm blind. Get it off. Jesus. Jesus, I can't breathe. You're my captain. Brave little captain. I'm so scared. Pain. I can't see. Fly, fly away, my brave little captain. I, I remember that song. My mother used to sing it when I was small. Pain's going away. God, I feel warm now. I'm not scared anymore. I don't have to be. She's going to take care of me. It's so warm. I'm part of something new and better. I keep remembering my mother. You spend your life trying to forget the warmth of the womb. But the world's so empty. It's so cold. I see it so clearly now. I was hungering for the warmth again. For that almost preternatural togetherness. We pretend with our bodies. But it isn't the same. It can't be the same. Career. Job. Honor. Country. All farce. What does it all mean? Reality is the vast loneliness of our solitary, cold existence. I'm blind. But I finally see. I'm staring at the ceiling. Tranked again. Thoridine, I think. The one that makes you feel like you're suffocating. I relive the past again and again. I was born on a terraformer transport in deep space. My parents named me Rebecca. Our new home was a desolate rock christened rim. My parents volunteered for the mission and the romantic spirit of the old earth pioneers. But there was little romance on that cruel world. The wind and the cold meant nothing to the aliens. They waited, dormant, until the time was right. I was the only survivor. I was found by a marine rescue team and returned to Earth. The doctors lost interest in me when I didn't respond to their treatments. I'm staring at the ceiling. There's a circular light in the center, humming softly. Cracks spread across the plaster like wrinkles on an old man's face. No like the wrinkles on my face. Some see space as a panacea, uncounted worlds with untold riches. They look to the heavens and they see the joy of opportunity. I look into space and see the cold void of hell, my only escape. Hicks, don't leave me. Hicks, don't leave me. I'm not leaving, darling. I've left. Christ, that was stupid. What the hell is wrong with me? Never needed anybody before. Nice hair. Must have been the booze talking. I was one of the lucky few. Go Marines, by God. I keep remembering Rim, Drake, Vasquez, even that ass Quinn. They were okay. Okay, hell, they were buddies. And I let them all die. I had to stay clear. Keep the focus. I've been waiting for my chance to get those alien bastards ever since I came back. Couldn't screw up now. Couldn't complicate it. Sorry, Newt. I go. You stay. I understand you think Hicks may be a problem. Maybe? Hell, the man's been bucking for a psych discharge ever since he came back from Rim. Looks like you got a problem, Stevens. Command sold on the guy. Yeah, think he's the big tough monster killer. Crew killer is more like it. It's not like the Rim mission was a success. Hell, the only survivor were a kid, a civilian woman, and Hicks. The kid's a brain case. And the woman? Well, you know what became of her which means Hicks is the only experienced hand available. We don't need his kind of experience. Come on, Bill, you've still got some pool over it. What the hell is this, Stevens? If you don't like Hicks, cross him off your party list. But he's got the experience, 
and he's got the mission. Understood? Yes, sir. Understood. Soldier, what are those crates? Plasma rifle, sir. 25 chargers and 25,000 packs for Corporal Hicks request. Have Corporal Hicks meet me in the sky office. Now. Just who in the hell authorized plasma weapons, Corporal? I was told to prepare the ship, sir. Blasters are notoriously unstable and grossly destructive. We're collecting specimens, not pieces. Perhaps your previous experience has distorted your judgment. First time you face off with one of those things, you'll wish you had something stronger. Maybe Command's impressed with you, but I'm not. I won't jeopardize this mission or the ship with those blasters. Take them off. Any other news on the merger proposal they sent over with Massey? I thought I told you. They went for it. Gotcha. Went for it. Yeah, lower price per share, too. I guess Massey convinced them our offer was good business. Good match. Yeah. I almost worked up a sweat. Listen, Ted. I want to talk to you about the biowarfare project. Any movement from the government? You know those government guys. Hush, hush, big secret. They want to grab the life form patent for themselves. Can't have that. Alien life forms are the next step in competitive biological weaponry. We've already got interest from Canada, Japan, Ireland, and the third world's gone ape. I want someone to look after our interests. Massey did a good job on the merger. Tell me about him. Pat, coffee will be ready in a minute. Daddy, why do they call it the Wall Street Journal? MBA from Harvard, doctorate in law from Cornell. He could have had his pick of the big two companies. Instead, he enlisted in the Marines for Christ's sakes. Honey, don't be late. Silver Star for bravery during the oil war, a couple hundred confirmed kills. He didn't enlist out of patriotism. He liked it. Good morning, Mr. Massey. He had more decorations than a Christmas tree. Then suddenly, he was court-martialed. Seems like he tried to kill his commanding officer for failing to order his squad to attack a civilian encampment. We paid off the military tribunal and hired him immediately. It's rare when you find a man who loves his work. The darkness is a blanket. Something drips like sweat, all warm and sticky. It feels good. Fly, fly away, my brave little captain. I, I remember that song. God, I loved you. Then I was torn from you, forced into this naked existence. So alone and cold, I never thought I'd feel that love again. My true mother is part of me. I can feel her, sliding wet in my throat, filling my lungs, my stomach wrapping her fingers inside so warm, so warm. Her teeth glitter like the stars. God, she is impossibly beautiful. She loves me more than you ever could. Easily, try to circle around the bunker and find a service port. We might be able to blast through it. Roger that, cover me. I've zeroed the aft plate. I'm going in on three, copy. One, two. Yeah, dead on buddy. We must have cut the main line. Yeah, dead on, buddy. Ugh! Damn, Corporal Hicks. Get your ass out of the mud before you short the whole suit. Well, and easily, we're stupid. You don't assume anything in combat. Yeah, they took out the remotes and the targeting system, and they're still dead. Clear to you, Blake? A real learning experience. I can see you're moved. In honor of Whaler's death, we're gonna spend the rest of the day on the course. Maybe some of this will sink in. Ah, oh, Jesus! Thanks a lot, Weller. I was impressed. Everyone on the squad was top rated in ordnance blinders, projectors, low level neutron stuff, and all the conventionals. Dakarona had put some thought into this. Come on, Blake, get up and over. They'd been working as a unit since inception, just over a year. It showed. Funny how much they reminded me of the Rim team. Move it! I kept thinking about Rim, remembering what it was like to be part of a team, to have friends would die for you, friends who... No, forget Rem. My friends are dead. Remember what happened after the pain, the loneliness. This wasn't about duty, honor, loyalty. This was for me and no one else. Thank you, officer. Please have a seat, Rebecca. My name's Newt. We've been discussing your problem, Newt. Dr. Hannah feels surgery is really our only alternative. Since you're a minor with no next of Ken, we really don't need anyone's permission to go ahead. But I think it's important you understand why. I I'll be good. I'll try harder and we've been through this before, New. Trying isn't good enough anymore. You have forced us to take drastic measures. It's really a minor operation. 
We target specific areas in the brain responsible for your problems, and we use a laser scalpel to sever the, burn the tissue. Really quite painless. Won't feel a thing ever again. Oh, hell. Less than 12 hours to lift off. I told Stevens I had some last minute business off base. He wasn't happy, but what was he gonna do, fire me? 12 more hours and I would have been in space. I never should have signed into the security mainframe. Accessing the institution's patient files was a piece of cake. I guess I was curious. Hey, you have to pass the retinal scanner and VC scan before. Sorry, tight schedule. Why'd I see her in the first place? Maybe I thought she'd understand. Maybe I just wanted someone here to remember me when it was over. Christ, I don't know. There was a time when living and dying meant something to me. Call security, call! See my face? Scary, isn't it? Where's Newt? From 4017. But you- My old squad, Quinn, Vasquez, and the rest, faced hell itself to rescue a scared little girl. Oh, and you can forget about outside security. I disconnected the downlink about an hour ago. Now they wanted to destroy her. Jesus, my friends died to save her. <laughs> nice try, quick draw. Newt's the only thing left of them. Drop your socks, kid. We're going for a ride. Newt's room was on the 40th floor of the medical high-rise. Even with the automatic security system blinked, they'd have the ground exits covered by now. Damn, kid. You look like shit. Look who's talking. <coughs> what, what are you doing? A little remodeling. Marine style. Keep your head down. We're going in. Hold tight. The wall blew out from the force of the explosion, and we went along with it. Nice view. The jet rescue technology had been developed after the World Trade Center smoked in 24. I borrowed the ship and the handheld controller from civilian operations. This ship had been designed for high-rise fire rescue. But I remember what Sergeant Apone used to say. Marines don't quit, they adapt. By the time they traced us back to base, it would be too late. One of the joys of taking a suicide mission, I suppose. Reprimands and court-martials lose their sting. Flipped off the remote meeting Mach 2 before the last piece of plaster hit the ground level. For years, the general public had been fed this image of the Marines as intellectual warriors. College diploma in one hand, M90 rapid fire in the other. I guess it's more comforting to imagine the national defense system in the hands of stiff-eyed, motionless marionette than some scarred teenager with a skin problem. Corporal Hicks, is there something wrong? Yeah, the Dodgers are still in Los Angeles. At ease, son. After a while, the Marines themselves bought the myth. Big mistake. Soldiers have the same wants and desires as everyone else. Sometimes they do things not because it's right or wrong, but because they must. We're going back, aren't we? We're really going back. For instance, nobody expects a Marine Corporal to smuggle an unauthorized passenger on board of a top security military flight. Maybe that's why it was so damn easy. Stevens was going to be trouble. Pulling those plasma weapons to teach me a lesson in military protocol was stupid. Wait until he finds Newt tucked away in the aft compartment. Still, I felt sorry for him. Just like I felt sorry for the grunts. I was taking them into war, and they didn't even know it. The force of the liftoff crushed any last doubts. I was back in space, and nothing was going to stop me. Great show. I haven't heard industrial noise like that since college. We deserve a little wreck time. It's been hell and a half since we started planning the intercept mission. Right now everything looks good, but I'm still a little worried. About that last minute business with Massey. It was a stupid damn mistake. Apparently one of the communications people sent Massey some classified mail through an unclassified channel. Hey, mom, look at this. Unfortunately, Massey's son accessed the material. Oh. My God! Very careless. Information sketchy at this point, but Massey's wife appears to have confronted him about the document. Pat, we just saw this horrible thing on the read screen. Regulations are quite clear on procedure in cases like this, but you must admit it was an unusual situation. He'd been married close to six years. Take it easy, Mr. Massey. We'll be done soon. He took pains to make it look like a robbery gone bad. The police didn't suspect a thing. Under the circumstances, Massey performed admirably. I had the sight boys do a workup on him right before liftoff, and he registered well with intolerable limits. I wonder how it feels. Being a sociopath, I mean. 
I would imagine it's quite liberating. Eyes only data block. Bio national internal memorandum. Operation outreach. Progress report. The government vessel Benedict launched on schedule 4554. First in command, Colonel Stevens. Second in command, Corporal Hicks. Our chase ship, K014, launched in pursuit immediately thereafter. Bio national executive assistant Patrick Massey. The government is seeking to retrieve specimens of an alien life form for its weapons development program. If they are successful, this could seriously impact Bio International's claim to the sole patent right on the new life form technology. The K014's mission is twofold. First, to follow the Benedict to the alien homeworld and gather biological data on the life form. Second, to inhibit the Benedict's crew from retrieving a viable test subject. Captain Massey has been given carte blanche towards this end. In the interim, our Bionational research team continues its examination of the human specimen salvaged from the ejected pilot's pod of the cargo vessel Junket. Someone's out there, Mother. Cargo Express. Identification. James Lukowski. Section 10, B611. Pilot, Classification 2S. Human specimen's pod had been damaged, causing loss of atmosphere, but vital signs were somehow preserved by the infusion of an alien life form. After retrieval, both specimens were brought to Bionational's Houston labs for analysis. Something touches me, Mother. I can feel it. In my arms. In my chest. Preliminary reports from our weapons specialists are encouraging. Full-scale testing should commence within the next 48 hours. We shall provide daily updates for all members of the Bionational board. Protect me, Mother. Don't let them hurt me. Please. Start wherever you'd like. Okay, okay. I'm with my mother. We're still in L.A. Your mother died several years ago? Cancer. We're taking the Wilshire tube into downtown L.A. Right then I knew I was dreaming. I never seen an empty tube. All of a sudden, we hear this loud scraping sound. Scraping? How do you mean? Like, like fingernails ripping fabric. Then suddenly, the car stops. Something was trying to get in. I pounded on the door, hoping someone would hear us. Then these things started to claw into the car. I ran to my mother and she made this sick bubbling sound deep in her chest. It was just a stupid nightmare, right? Right? What happened after the television came on? First, there was only distortion. But then something started to come at me from inside the screen. I must have dozed off. Next thing I knew, the stewardess was standing next to me. I remember thinking that she reminded me of someone. Who? It's going to sound funny, but my mother. All at once, these teeth, they... It ripped through her chest, like... It had been inside her the whole time. I kept screaming for my mommy, but she wasn't there. Just the monster, coming closer and closer. It was shiny and wet, and I think it wanted to kill me. End transcript. Copy 2.3A2. Dr. Wade Slaw, Arona. Civilian advisor, CMC. Fascinating. All these reports are from within a 50-mile radius. Yes, Dr. Arona. And I've got a dozen more just the same. Every patient rates sensitive on the Cryer scale and double figures on the Emerson. The descriptions of the creatures, they're consistent? Identical. Some of the technicians on the psych side did a workup populating different modes of the communication for the alien creatures. The most plausible is telepathy, at least some form of telepathy. You think they're trying to communicate with us? Unlikely. The data we've collected doesn't suggest higher intelligence. The sightings are random and confined to a specific geographic area. Very odd. We've kept the existence of the alien creatures completely secret. All of a sudden we're experiencing a wave of spontaneous telepathic events. The question is, why now? And why Earth? Mother, where are you? Oh, Jesus, it hurts all over. I'm scared. He's coming out of it. BP is slightly elevated. Heart rate and respiration normal. I show no movement from the parasite. It appears dormant. Your name is James Lakowski. You were captain of the space freighter Junket. You were on Earth in a quarantined medical facility. If you're feeling up to it, we'll release you from the straps. Why aren't I dead? Please, could someone tell me what happened? I want to see my wife. Please. He looks normal enough. Hell, he's worth billions. 
I wish everyone were that normal. The creature has lodged itself into the subject's digestive system, drawing relatively insignificant amounts of blood and fluids. Nevertheless, it is growing at an incredible rate. What about the pilot? Does he know? There's been some discussion on that point. Ethical questions have been raised regarding the propriety of informing the subject, considering the ultimate prognosis. And you? What do you think, Driner? We have a unique opportunity to study the development of an utterly new alien life form. Reactions of the host could be important. Of course, in that case, he would have to know. Then tell him. I had Levitz drop some hints at the San Diego Arms Fair and everyone's excited. Major Lin's begging for a 60-day exclusive. Quan Chu Lin can kiss my ass. We're setting conditions, not the Chinese. So when does Dreiner think he'll have something to show? Couple of days, 72 hours tops. Jesus, you've been staring at me for hours. Is that all you want to do? I'm sorry, does it bother you? I mean, it's your money. It's my money. Women are blessed. They know how it feels to be joined with another life. To share themselves selflessly. It must be wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. My back's killing me. Come on, babe, you're making me feel weird. Are you sure you don't want something? Yes. I want to know how it feels. Salvaje! Where the hell have you been? Studying. Yeah? Well, study this. A couple of government suits dropped by the shop today. It seems they're real interested in channel 2393. What did you tell them? I didn't tell them shit. If they knew I was hooking up illegals, they'd pull my license and I'd lose all my military contracts. Then everything is fine. No, everything is not fine. Look, I've been hooking up you religious psych jobs for three years now. And I've never had problems with the FCC, cops, or anybody else. Until now. Damn it, Silvaje. What the hell is that thing? The Messiah. The Immaculate Incubation. God, you're out of your mind. I'm through, Silvaje. I'm not risking risk. You talk to me of risk? Ugh. You're crazy. You're nothing. I'm nothing. Only vessels here to serve the true Messiah, glorified in having been chosen for the ultimate communion. Don't be afraid of him. Believe in him. We will continue the message and find others who've seen the vision. Look at him. No. The broadcast will continue. Don't be afraid of the government. Be afraid of me. How long till the next communication from the Benedict? Another hour. We zeroed on their local antenna. We should be able to get a clear transmission. Good. Keep your distance. They're loaded with DS sensors. Don't want them to spot us till after we go through gravity burn. Okay, one more time. The government ship has five basic access ports. Two, two four, two aft, and the loading bay. We'll be going through the number one aft lock. You all have low-level blasters. Be careful. Military ships are armored, but an unlucky shot could still rupture the hull. Save the guns for the soft targets. Internal systems, electronics, crew. We'll hold the crew prisoner until we reach the alien homeworld. Once we're through, we will purge the military computers and destroy the ship. No survivors, of course. I pulled Newt out of the spare cargo lock 12 hours after liftoff. It looked like the drugs are wearing off, though it was hard to tell. I felt sorry for her. Stevens took it about as well as expected. I told the base commander you were unreliable, Hicks, but this, this is insanity. What the hell were you thinking? Did you think at all? I offer no excuses, sir. I did what? No excuses. Oh, that's very manly. Maybe you can try an explanation. If not for me, then for the men. Explain why you brought extra weight onto a carefully balanced gravity drive ship. It's not his fault. He did it for me. Oh, I understand now. It's not his fault. You forced him to stow you aboard. Forced him to jeopardize the mission. Leave her out of it. It's my responsibility. And the gravity balance is normal. I dumped 104 pounds of that raspberry flavored shit from the ship's stores just before we took off. I like that raspberry flavored shit. Shut up, Weller. I should lock your ass up and keep you there till the court martial. I'm sure the military court would be interested in hearing how a top secret military vessel left base without thorough inspection by his commanding officer, sir. But the mission comes ahead of my personal desires. Okay, the girl is your responsibility, Hicks. We'll settle the rest when we return to Earth. If we return to Earth. Man, I've never seen Steven so pissed. 
I think there's something seriously wrong with our Corporal Wilkes. But what the hell, the girl's cute. Easily, you in? Nah, I've got a walk through. Keep my seat warm. This is Easily. I'm in section A for Apple 5. No visible hull stress. Proceeding into A for Apple 6. Benedict to K014. Prepare for transmission of updated telemetry data. What the hell? Our ETA with the whole world is. What the hell is this? Do the others know? <laughs> Somebody's opened the number four airlock. No. No. Who the hell's down there? The area should be clear. Christ, we're a couple hours away from gravity burn. No. Jesus, somebody's gone outside. Get Stevens and Hicks up here, now. Get me picture, damn it. What's the problem? Who the hell is that? We're not sure, he's not responding. Damn. The pain. Like a scream inside me. Oh God, I want to live. For Christ's sakes, hold him down. I'm trying. We need some tranks in here now. I want to live. Ah! <laughs> it's the subject. He's broken away and ah! The guards are dead. I want to kill more. I can hear alarms. Don't care. Don't care. Got to get outside. I want to feel the sun. Ah! Hot outside, wet with humidity. Get out of the car. Oh my God. Leather seats, smooth, soft. I smell hot ozone as I accelerate. Death is all around me. I feel utterly alive. The expressway cuts directly through the city. I am thinking of my wife. They try to stop me, but it is impossible. They don't understand. This is my time. I cannot be denied. I see orange flames. There's a burst of heat. I want them to suffer. The building is an old friend. Real flowers out front. They smell like expensive perfume. I enter the elevator. The buttons are smooth, cool plastic. The burnished metal plate glows in the dim green light. So close. I ache for her touch. James? We touch. For the first time in my life, I understand perfection. Get him! The moment ends. I hold my wife's hand. It is warm. We have nowhere to go. I aim for the sun. The heat is a blanket. I force the ship to fly higher. The control panel glows a hundred colors. I know this because I am there. I turn towards my wife. She is beautiful. My God, the sun. It's so bright. Oh God, no. For Christ's sakes, hold him down. I'm trying. We need Tranks in here now. Watch it. He's reaching for your gun. Damn it. Get him down. Oh, Jesus. It's, it's coming out. My God. His vital signs are going off the scale. I'm going in. I want to see the birth firsthand. I'd feel better if you waited with me. There's nothing to worry about. I just want to be part of it. What's it taking so long? It's hard to tell. He seems to be fighting it. What do you mean fighting it? Can he hurt it? We don't know. Nobody knows. Stand away, for God's sake. What the hell do you think you're doing? This entire project depends on you. You want it? You can have it. Ah! Rin! Ah! Ah! You stupid son of a bitch. You're exposing the entire lab. Help me. Systems breach. Jesus, that's impossible. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Rian! I think I can hit it if it just holds- No! Had to save it. Too important. Rian would understand. We need the alien alive. Your name is Pendar. Under the provisions of the Baines Amendment, you've been declared a terrorist. You have no rights under American law. Any means may be used to elicit information, up to and including physical torture. Uh, I can't feel anything. Spinal blocks. We've deadened everything from the neck down. Don't worry. It's not permanent. Yet. Let's make this simple. Tell us about the church. Tell us their plans for the creatures. If they find out I've told you, they'll make me one of them. 
I'm told you're a video technician, good with your hands. So I'm gonna start with your legs. We used to do this without anesthesia. There are terrible complications from the shock. The leftist papers accused us of using Kirkland probes to actually read minds. I wish it were that easy. Personally, I don't care for the probes or psychoactives. Too much distortion. Wh what are you doing? It's what you're doing. Tell us what you saw, who was involved, and then we won't have to hurt you. Look in the mirror. You won't actually feel anything until we stop the spinal tap, and then you'll warm up slowly. What, what are you doing to me? After that, if you're still not cooperative, we'll find something else to play with. I didn't bother with editing, Dr. Arona. I thought you'd want to see it immediately. Almost nine hours. I was quite impressed. How long before he talked? <coughs> I confess to all my crimes. I am guilty. What's it matter? I've seen the incubation. I've seen Salvahi's God. You can't begin to understand its power. It would be easier for you if I were part of Salvahi's conspiracy. At least then you'd have the reason. Someone to blame. Pendar, we just got a corporate on the work link. Are you available? Corporate scale? I'll make time. It's the sheer coincidence of it that terrifies you. The real world's like that. Random. Chaotic. Casual. Pendar, video link. We got a call about some crystal switching problems? Oh uh, yeah, just a minute. Video link's here. Should I send him down? I remember thinking, just another job. The regular tech's out sick, one of those mutated flu viruses. You do much crystal work? Not recently. Corporate designates have a lock on the best jobs. When you're freelance, it's almost all private or military. Routine. Switchers in the back. Any questions, beat me. Otherwise, I'll check back in a half hour or so. Thanks. One of the logic chips had crunched. I had it in and out in under a minute. I was good with my hands. That's when I saw them. Cheap lead shunts. Hand soldered under the optics line. About as sophisticated as an old style fuse. Security types like them because they're physical and temporary. Of course, it makes them easy to circumvent. Don't know why I burned them. Curiosity, maybe the challenge. My god, they're real. Hello again, it's Ostro. Just checking in. The others have forgotten your sacrifice, but I remember. I'll always remember. We captured it while it fed on you. It seemed to need that primitive animal kinship. While it acclimated to the artificial environment, you were its home. You gave it your body, your life. At least you didn't die in vain. You would have been thrilled with our progress. Originally, of course, we merely planned to study the specimen while awaiting the return of the K-104. For once, we had a bit of luck. You see, the creature that we captured was a queen. And that changed things. Its birthing process is utterly parthenogenic with none of the primitive ritual associated with sexual reproduction. The austerity of it all is quite breathtaking. It seems to live for only one purpose, to reproduce. What's a queen without its subjects? The marketing people want us to hold off on further testing until they can put together a promotional campaign for the November Waytech conference. Even with the secrecy, BioNational's investment rating was doubled on the international boards. Our organic weapons program is going to revolutionize the industry. I'm so happy for you, for us. I was standing at one of the viewports, staring into space. The light from the stars stretched around the ship like glowing white neon. I was trying to remember my parents. All I can remember was the blood. It, it's an optical illusion. What? The stars. Gravity drives so powerful we're bending the light. You get used to it. Beats the hell out of hibernation. The Marines were wary of Captain Stevens in the aftermath of Private Easley's death. Stevens insisted it was an accident, closing the investigation before it started. I could understand that attitude from Stevens, but what about Hicks? Hello again. Mind if I sit here? No. I mean, it's alright. In the midst of this, what did Weller see in me? Corporal Hicks must think a lot of you to stow you on board. Stevens is gonna have his ass once we're back on Earth. Hicks and I understand each other. Yeah, I bet you understand each other real well. Knock it off, Ramirez. He couldn't find somebody his own age to- I said knock it off. No one had ever shown interest in me before. At first, it didn't make any sense. This is where we store the blasters and the rest of the portable gear. Here, let me- Don't! Touch me. It's okay. My fault. I I'm sorry, I'm just- Been around these things before? Once, when I was little. Really? 
you must have run with a rough crowd. Then I realized he was like me. He knew how it felt to be alone. What made you join the Marines? Don't you miss your family? The Marines are my family. Listen, about Corporal Hicks. If there is something between... Shh. Tell me why you hit Ramirez back in the commissary. Ramirez has got a big mouth. He had no right to say what he did. I was afraid it might be true. Hicks gave me a schedule of token administrative duties to keep me occupied during the voyage. Hatred of the aliens burned inside him like an open flame. It was all that sustained him. He'd lost all sense of compassion. He shrugged off Easley's death as if it were trivial, an annoyance. I shared his hatred of the aliens, but suddenly our bitter quest seemed empty, almost ugly. Private Bweller, do you have business at this station? Hicks, he was only- Get back with the other soldier, now. What's wrong with you? Bweller was- I saw what he was doing. It's going to stop, even if I have to confine both of you to your quarters. My god, you're jealous. I'm not a child anymore. Bweller's my friend. Maybe my only friend. I won't let you ruin that. We found an unused storage unit behind the engine compartment and met as often as we could. It was all so new to me. Sometimes, I feel so frightened, like I'm still eight years old. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm frightened of the way I feel about you. I wonder how that will change when we reach the home world. Maybe Hicks has been hating so long, he had forgotten what it's like to care about someone. I I've never done this before. Neither have I. Maybe I'd been locked away so long, I'd never had the chance to try. We stood at the viewport, staring into space. The light from the stars stretched around the ship like bands of glowing white neon. The aliens destroyed my life once. I couldn't stop them then. But I could stop it from happening again. <coughs> the bionational people never suspected. I replaced the shunts, pretended nothing had happened. All the time knowing that I had to find Salvaje. Bendar, got another call for you. Main feed's gone down at the- Get somebody else. Open up, you crazy bastard! Let me in! Welcome, I am Didi. We are- I know who you are. Salvaje's vision had tapped into something primal. Uncontrollable. As his message spread, the devoted sought him out. Provided for him. Welcome, brother. Please join us in our- Where the hell is he? Salvaje! Damn you! I've seen it! It's real! We know. Salvaje's congregation gathered closer, watching in utter silence. I told them what I'd seen. There was no surprise. It was as if they were expecting me. It took me a moment to truly understand. The vision had overwhelmed them. Where I was seeing monsters, they were seeing salvation. Everything quiet? Got a glitch in one of the infrareds. Maintenance said they'd... Wait a minute. The motion sensors just picked her up. Should I activate the grid? Maybe one of the executives forgot to punch her in. Try a long-range retinal and photo ID search. I'm not getting anything. Oh, Jesus. I'm picking up movement all over the site. Turn on all the hot guns and automatics. Burn up everything in the perimeter. What's that she's wearing over her? Sabahe's congregation poured into the Bionational Complex. I was stunned by their power. I want everybody on hard fire standby. Locked and loaded. Nobody gets in. Who in the hell could have... Guns didn't frighten them. Death didn't frighten them. Nothing mattered but the cause. It wasn't that they weren't feeling the pain. They just didn't care. Keep firing! Keep firing! We need more men! We can't... Yeah! Savahe wanted me to see everything. Even in the midst of the blood and death, he felt it important that I believe. The creature watched passively, hovering protectively over its brood. We have come to consummate our love. To purge the vision from our minds. To be one with you. Take me. Take me. Take... It burst out in a glistening blur. Vicious tendrils of fluid fluttering behind it like some obscene afterbirth. I could see his mouth twisting in pain as the creature attached itself. And he started to scream. Ah! Ah! For the first time, Salvaje understood the true meaning of sacrifice. Ah! What? My god. They're taking her. Please, take me, please. <laughs> Sir, we're under some sort of attack. I've lost contact with ground floor security. I think we should notify the- No outsiders. We can handle this in-house. Salvaje's alkalites dragged their infected brethren outside, making room for the others. I saw dozens take the spores. They were all her children now. Killers, murderers. 
queen's mine. I heard gunfire outside the chamber. And suddenly the aliens screamed. It was the cry of a mother at the death of her child. I broke away from Silvahe's men and staggered blindly through the nest. The life form patents belong here. We developed it. We nurtured it. There's too many of them. We can't possibly... Mother... You... you don't understand. I'd never hurt you. Brian's dead. You're all I have left of him. You have to understand. I love you. I only want the best for you. I don't remember much after that. Security police quarantined the building. They must have found me inside. I just can't understand why. Why me? Oh my god. It makes sense now. She did it. That thing. I've been part of it all along. Hooking up Salvaje, burning the security stops. <coughs> Maybe it goes back even further. Birth. School. Every decision of my life. Maybe she controlled it all. It wasn't Salvaje's conspiracy. It was hers. I was just another soldier. Another sacrifice. Oh god, please. I'm scared of dying. I want to live. I want to- That's enough. What did you do with him? Organ banks take him what they can use. Eyes, skin, what's left of his stomach. They'll burn the rest. We're wasting time. We still don't know where the fanatics are hiding. According to Bionational documentation, alien gestation takes anywhere from 72 hours to a week or more. If any of the newborn escape, if any of them are queens, God help us all. As the ship approached the alien's homeworld, I was overwhelmed by a hideous premonition of death. Boiler and I spent every spare moment together. I knew he shared my apprehensions. There was an air of desperation to our encounters, as if we didn't dare waste an instant. We made love the final day, surrounded by the bleak gray metal of the ship's hull. I remember thinking how frail we were next to our machines, and for the first time since Rim, I cried. Son of a bitch! Captain Stevens! There's something out there. Perhaps it's debris of some kind? No way, sir. It's changing course, following us. Some sort of ship. I'll sound General Cor- No, not quite yet. This is Stevens. Everything is set. Prepare for docking. Massey here. Excellent. Excellent. Be seeing you shortly. What in the hell? Something hit us! Jesus. Code 5 alert. We're under attack. That's impossible. It must be some kind of drill. An accident. You're safe here, Nude. Wait for me. I love you. And I'll be back. Anybody know what's happening? Your guess is as good as mine. Nobody can find Stevens or Hicks. What about Jones? She had communications duty. I haven't seen her since she... Shit! Someone's pulled the loader mechanism. This thing's useless. This one too. They've all been zeroed. This is some kind of setup. This is Captain this is Stevens. Stevens. I want all crew to report to the loading bay. Immediately. I suppose you're going to kill the rest of them? Like you killed easily? What happened? He catch you transmitting to these bastards? Get off it, Hicks. You don't care about the damn marines any more than I do. All you care about are your precious aliens. That's it. Nice and easy. Double check the ship's complement. Make sure we have everyone. Your marines are safe for now, Corporal Hicks. We still need an alien specimen, and they seem to thrive on humans. Humans? You think you can use the marines for bait? Christ, didn't they? That's enough. I don't like you, Stevens. I don't like greedy men, but I can't countenance traitors, even when they're on my side. Never know when they might turn. Wait, Massey, you don't understand. You need me. Not anymore. Prepare the dropship for landing. We're going hunting. For one brief moment, I'd found love. One of Hicks' grunts, a marine named Weller. What is it about life that as soon as you find something good, it's taken away from you? I could feel the panic rising in my chest, choking, claustrophobic. My first instinct was to hide, just like Rem, just like Earth. That's what the enemy depends on, human, alien. They rely on that fear to endure. No! It explained the resilience of creatures like the alien. They don't understand fear. They don't understand anything beyond their own existence. I knew I would have to become like them to survive. It had been four hours since we had been boarded. Who the hell were they? Soldiers? Mercenaries? This is easier than I had hoped. Did you double check the inboard rostery? Stevens, Ace, Easy, and Jones dumped the bodies before we docked. The rest of the complement is accounted for. It didn't matter. It wouldn't have mattered to them. 
No wonder Stevens chewed my ass over packing plasma rifles. He was afraid we'd use them against you. I still can't figure where the Corporation found the balls to intercept a government ship on a classified mission. I think you'll find the Corporation capable of almost anything. We still believe in free enterprise, capitalism, and I'm afraid your government wants to keep the alien life form for itself. My government? You make it sound like the Corporation is an independent state. Jesus, those things destroyed Rim. Think what they could do on Earth. I have. We're breeding them. You'll stay with me aboard Benedict. Your men seem to respect you. I might be able to use that. You've already got those things on Earth. Why not just kill us and be done with it? Oh, but you're going to die. Rest assured of that. But I'm sure you understand the call of science. We're charged with investigating the homeworld before returning to Earth. You never know what you might find. Their homeworld follows traditional patterns. There's probably some sort of ecological balance. The aliens were a remarkable life form, but it may not be the dominant species on its homeworld. A corporation like Bionational succeeds by staying one step in front of the competition. In five years, the alien will be obsolete. Passe. We'll need to find newer, superior biological weapons. We're fishing. Your marines are bait. We're picking up some burn on the outer hull. Ground scanners are starting to clear. Jesus, Matthew, are you seeing this? Yeah. Put down near the formation and dispatch the floaters. Make sure all the data recorders are up. They're gonna want this on disk. Then drop the marines and enjoy the show. The atmosphere is marginal. There are only enough mass for us good guys. Hell no. You're rough, tough marines. You can handle it. I still don't like this. Come on. You read the documentation. The adults are a bitch, but they're ground-based. Once the crab-like things attach to a host, they go dormant. We pick them up, and we go home. No problem. Yeah, right. No problem. I knew I would have to kill them. The ducks worm through the ship separated by an intricate network of automatic interior doors. The aliens use similar tunnels to attack us on rim. Somebody pulled the loaders from the marine's blasters. Probably that piece of shit Stevens. I saw what was left of him down in the loading bay. It saved me the trouble. I couldn't imagine Stevens actually jettisoning the loaders. He was too prudent for that. The intruders were calm, confident that they were in complete control. Despite many warnings, Hicks and his marines made a similar mistake on rim. It was a matter of perception. The aliens would have understood. The Benedict didn't belong to those bastards in the loading bay. It belonged to me. Does this make any sense to you? Bio-national? The government? We're all supposed to be on the same side? And we're expendable. There's no sides anymore, just money. Christ, I'm getting bare nominals on the atmosphere. And the grunts are hardly affected. They're acting like it's another day in boot camp. Maybe they believe all that, we're the best recruiting shit. But they don't look so mean from here. But hell, we've got the best seats in the house. My god, it's, it's fused out of bone. Petrified tissue. Anything left after the aliens? Come on, for Christ's sake. Stay together. Don't think about the enemy. Think about survival. Survival? That's funny, man. Where the hell are they? Why don't they attack? Hold it. Are you crazy? Back off. There's something inside. Something moving. But it's not attacking. Why are we still alive? Something's wrong. Something wrong with the entire mission. Maxi, we're under it. Regroup. Get back to the... Go, go, go! Lucian and Haynes are both dead. Those things are... You son of a bitch! Massey, we need help! Oh my god. This is where they breed. Where they... Oh, Jesus! They're everywhere! I think I can see an opening. We might... Damn, have... what's that noise? Sounds like gunfire. Let's get the guns from the lander. I felt the ship lurch when the lander separated. Weller had left with them. I could feel it. The same way I could still feel his skin. So gentle. So warm. No. Forget Weller. Forget everything good. The aliens didn't need love. Loneliness. Fear. The concepts were meaningless. They only knew death. It kept things simple. They're all around us! Jesus Christ! We're surrounded! We barely breathe. Maxi! You bastard! Do something! Screw it. Your marines are good. Getting away from the hive, overpowering my people. I may have underestimated you. Scientists will raise a fuss over the inboard documentation, but they'll get over it. 
What about my men? What about them? My principal objective was to keep the government from securing an alien specimen. Mission accomplished. Drop it, you son of a bitch. Well, seem to have missed one. What are you? Ship's mascot? Release Hicks. Now, the alien would have attacked. What's wrong with me? Why couldn't I fire? I, I said release him. You're very pretty. You can't be one of those hard-ass Marines. I bet you've never even fired one of those. The- Shoot him! Shoot him, Newt! Don't. Don't come any closer. You wouldn't want to kill me, honey. How could you live with yourself, murdering another human being? It wasn't fair. I wanted to be just like them. Stay back! God help me, I was only human. You stupid bitch. Try to use a weapon against me? Christ! I don't need weapons. I could open your throat with my fingers, feel the blood spray down my arms. But you're not worth the effort. You're nothing. A distraction. Christ, you remind me of my wife. No! Newt, run! I'm through running. Ugh! I was wrong. I wasn't like the alien. Nothing truly human could stand such emptiness. <coughs> you don't scare me, bitch. Nothing scares me. Shit, you don't even have the strength to. I thought of Bueller. I thought of our love. Wrong. You can't stop it? There's no time, damn it. Bueller, this is Newt. You have to get away from the lander now. Down! Auto all the controls. Everything. We'll have to transfer the Benedict's nukes to their lander and set them ourselves. I don't care what it takes. I'm going to finish it. Weller, listen to me. We're going to use the intruder's landers to recover you. Find somewhere safe to wait for- We can't wait. We managed to salvage blasters and ammunition from the lander. We're going back to the hive. The hive? You- you can't. Those things- We have to. We already lost Stevens. Those men in the lander. We can't let anyone else die. Stevens was a traitor. Those men were going to kill you. Now please, I'm begging you, wait for me! What is this? Some test of marine courage? You're wasting time, forget them. They were dead before the mission began. I, I can't explain it. We have to go back. I love you, Newt. We launched Massey's lander and began the slow descent to the alien's homeworld. I could see Bueller over the ship's monitors. His face was reduced to an abstract blur, tiny electric pulses of light and color. Hicks ignores the screens, lost in his dreams of vengeance. At least he still had that. I had nothing. There were no dreams left for me. Short burst! Damn it! Conserve your fire! Motion sensors are off the scale! They're all over us! Just the stark reality of the alien. Move it! The stark reality of death. I'm reading plus 200 rounds, Bueller. We're running out of time. They're converging ahead, as if they're swarming over some- Oh my god! In here, now! Please, keep them away. The rest are dead. Burn these alien bastards to get back out! Maybe one or two of us will make it out in one piece. Hicks dropped the lander just outside the alien hive. Sand and dust danced around the ship like some mocking, ethereal smoke. Like phosphorescent swirls of color flickering across the lander's forward monitor. Damn it! Weller, don't fall back! Just keep moving! I think it knew. I think it wanted to teach me a lesson about the futility of love. The horror of trust. I'll cover you! I could see it all. No! Jesus, he's he's still alive! Please. Newt, stop it! Damn it, Newt! I tried to keep you away from him, from all of them! Why do you think they went back for those bastards in the hive? Their principal function is to preserve life, human life. They were engineered just for this mission. Spent their whole lives locked inside a marine compound waiting for this moment. They're cost-efficient and expendable. You, me, Stevens, we were the only humans on board. There were interaction problems with the earlier models. Humans just didn't like them. So these prototypes were designed to socialize. They eat like us, talk like us. Damn programmers, we're almost too clever. Androids develop sensitivities. Questions about their emotional stability and how they react to the truth. So we treated them as equals, played along with the deception. Stevens was trying to tell those bastards, just before they killed him, the aliens need living tissue to incubate. Bait. That's a laugh. Why? Didn't you tell me? Christ, Newt. You weren't supposed to fall in love with one of them. I couldn't jeopardize the mission just for you. You're worse than any of them. You're dead inside. Just like the aliens. Like that son of a bitch I shot. To think I wanted to be like you. Newt! Get inside and lock down. Hurry! Hicks, the hatch is sealed. Everyone's inside. Forget the aliens. We have to launch. 
Not until I set the warheads. Oh my god, they're outside. Crawling across the hall. They want in. Shit! They cut the external feed, external controls and telemetry and launch functions. Looks like nobody's going anywhere. Don't. Don't look at me. You must have known. How could you? We have... Does it matter? Does anything matter anymore? Just don't leave me. Let me pretend. A few more seconds. Yeah, come to Papa. <laughs> Save it for the rest of us. I'll die before I let them touch me again. Ah, what in? That's impossible. Nothing can stop those things. Shh. Listen, they've stopped. At least, nothing human. It had dead eyes. Seeing and not seeing. It had destroyed the aliens. But not for us. Never for us. Why? It didn't speak. But something exploded inside my head. Bright like a million suns. The images boiled up from some deeper place. The same plane as primal instinct. Hunger. Pain. Fear. Hatred. Newt! I... can... see! My name is Newt. I'm six years old. I live on a world called Rem. There are 159 of us on the planet. The corporation calls us terraformers. My father calls us pioneers. The corporation had sent us out to investigate some sort of magnetic surge. I can still remember my father's smile. The scent of my mother's perfume. The readings are going off the scale. We must have found the mother leg. You know the rules. We find it, we keep it. Oh, God. It's hard to believe something this big, this kind of resonance, but without being noticed. It's partly sheltered by a natural rock formation, and the damn EC sat's never worked up a speck. What's it matter? It's ours now. My name's Newt. I'm not six years old. Jesus, it was all so long ago. I don't want to remember. Don't make me remember. Wind's really kicking up. We'll make a quick loop to secure the claim, and we'll head back. You kids stay inside. I mean it. No fooling around. You can watch over the monitor, but don't touch. I can't stand to see it happen again. My god. The hole. It's enormous. Over here. Looks like some sort of gash in the hole. I was only six years old. The discovery of the derelict didn't really mean anything to me. This is incredible. Everything's smooth, almost organic. We had terraformed a barren rock into a viable, life-sustaining planet. We had battled time, space, the elements, and won. We weren't afraid. Sarah! In here! That came later. Maybe that thing in the derelict shared our blind arrogance. Until the aliens killed it. It somehow knew that I had seen the wreckage. We shared a grotesque form of empathy. Newt! What's it doing to you? Uh, uh, it wants me to know. I could only pick out bits and pieces. Like someone blinking channels on a video. Described a ship. Some kind of mission. The eggs. Oh god, the eggs. Don't. Don't make me see it. Again. My name is Newt. I'm six years old. My father knelt in front of the pods. I could see him over the tracker's monitor. I can see the excitement in his eyes. Jesus, Sarah. I see something moving. It's still in there. It's still a lot. Daddy! No! The pilot aboard the cargo vessel lost control of its ship. It should have drifted forever should have carried the alien things into the hell of deep space. Instead, it crashed into the world that Lamb would christen Rim, and the spore survived. They waited patiently for her new blood. They found it in the colonists. My parents. Your... friend? I could hear a high-pitched whine sound in my ears, like some distant, horrible scream. This antenna's shot. We'll have to bypass it and run directional through the app system. My mind was slipping away. When you're young, you can't understand even. It's an intangible thing, like the air or the sky, and just as pervasive. I wanted to believe there was something better, there was some kind of hope. It watched us with its dead eyes, and I felt a chill. It had come to the alien homeworld out of hate. It had rescued us in the name of revenge. Perhaps evil is the only universal truth. Eyes only, double alpha log on Arona. I I've lost track of time since the bionational attack. I've barricaded myself in my office to give me time to prepare for this final report. Evidently, the alien queen is able to communicate in some subconscious fashion with other species and human beings. These disseminations manifest themselves in a form of pattern nightmare. The dreams were a lore. At first, we thought we'd be able to contain the spore. 
infested seemed limited to a narrow geographic range. <laughs> and yet, for every cluster we found, there were ten more just like it. Name's Ostro. Looks like he was some sort of big shot in Bionational. Burn this son of a bitch. The alien subconscious bait transcended class and political boundaries. We found hives everywhere. Come on, move it! I want a perimeter around the house, and I want air support now! With each new discovery, our hope of destroying the creatures before they entered a civilian population faded. However, we still consider containment an option. In studying the Bionational files, we learned their queen had gestated a number of weeks prior to maturation. Using their experiment as a baseline, I assumed we all had time before the new queen would become viable. I was wrong. Perhaps our worst mistake was underestimating the sheer instinctual cunning of the creatures. We didn't see the underlying pattern behind their evolutionary process. The way every facet of their existence was geared toward propagation. The queens matured at whatever speed their survival dictated. We had assumed the gestation period was time for the alien embryo to feed and grow. But it was more than that. It was an opportunity for the unknowing host to spread its spore to other sites. There was a geometric perfection to the infestations. Each queen would still lay more queens. And with every generation, the spore became more enriched, more. Ah, at last. The civilian authority was weak in the face of the devastation. When the generals finally staged their coup, it seemed almost welcome. Ah, you can't do this. It's against the... Shut up. The military created testing centers where physicians checked civilians for signs of the alien infection. At first, the tests were voluntary. Within days, that changed. There were rumors the military was facing pretext of alien infection to eliminate political dissidents, the poor, the disaffected, as if such petty rivalries even mattered. Vital services, water, electricity began to fail. We've heard of infestations in Europe, Australia. The sea is growing with remarkable speed. From all this, I've come to understanding something about humanity. Man is an animal, driven by animal passions. Civilization is a pathetic charade of manners, predicated on a tissue thin veil of lies. In the future, if there is a future, historians may blame our failures on some external cause. The aliens, bionational, fate. I know the truth. Those things didn't destroy us. We did. They they'll be here soon. The military has organized off-world ships to evacuate vital personnel to their outer colonies, mainly their own precious hides. I've chosen to remain behind. We made the mistake of perceiving the aliens as sentient warriors. I finally realized the truth. Their disease, a cancer. It'll be a moment, Colonel. The seals have to be burned before the outer door. Just do it. My, my mother died of cancer. Not how I've been thinking of her. Years ago, following surgery, doctors would apply radiation to the affected area in hope of destroying all traces of the scourge. I'm showing green on 90% of the warheads. The burst should vaporize the mountain. Prevailing winds will do the rest. Sounds so primitive, but there are times when the old ways are most effective. I've timed the detonation to coincide with the military's escape. They still think they can destroy the creatures. They think someday they'll be able to come back to their world. There's something pathetic about the struggle. My only regret is that I won't survive to see them proven wrong. I take pride in my pragmatism. I realize this transmission is pointless. I doubt if the long-range relay stations are even operational. Still, if anyone is actually seeing this, I... just... I... Doesn't really matter, does it? I never actually fired one of these. I feel rather... Foolish. God, no! Damn them. Damn them to hell. They thought they could breed the monsters. Christ! The monsters were breeding us! We've got to go back. To those things? To spit and polish bastards? I'm not sure which is worse. It's over. It's over, Newt. We're helpless. You're right. We're helpless. It's not. Destroying the aliens had been an all-consuming passion, yet there was little sense of achievement as we left the rendezvous with the Benedict. Hicks went through the motions because the motions were all he had left. The other watched and approved. And in the end, revenge was just another chemical reaction, like all things in life. One instant, the hive was there. The next instant, it was gone. Finally, Hicks knew he had to go back. There simply wasn't anything else. Core centered. Gravity drive up. Let's get the hell out of here.
We were nothing when we left Earth. We'd been sent to find specimens. We were returning with salvation. The world seemed hollow, ridiculous. Where would I find my salvation? Weller? Don't. Please. Are you... Are you all right? Please, Newt. Don't look at me. I, I can't. I need to know. I need to know if, if what we had was real. When that thing tore into me, I remember thinking how much I loved you. Then I saw what was left, and suddenly I knew. God, we all knew. Hicks said it was just programming, part of some socialization process. You believed you were human because it was easier. But that doesn't explain what happened between us. It can't. It can't. I touched him. His skin was soft. He was alive. Maybe all life is like Hicks's revenge. Chemical. Random. Hate. Death. Love. All meaningless outside some larger context. It always comes back to our arrogance. The scientists want to draw a line between man and his machines. Knew. But what did it matter? Boiler cared for me. Not like Hicks. Not like Earth's doctors. What made their hate more alive than their creation's love? Time passed quickly. For the first time since Rem, I felt a sense of calm. Earth drifted below us like some bright toy. And at long last, we were home. We haven't got much time. Creatures have breached the Galveston security line. I thought Arona said- Arona's dead. Happened weeks ago. We found what was left of him inside the main bio lab. Sir, we're picking up two ships on the DS scanner. One's emitting standard type four beacon. The other is unidentified. Type four is asking permission to land. We've cannibalized most of the Transco computers, but it managed to pull a preliminary ID. The Benedict? My god, Steven's ship. Grant permission for landing. I'll meet them at the pad, personally. Wind and rain battered the ship as we settled on the landing platform, almost as if nature itself was rebelling against the military's plan. The rain reminded me of Rem, reminded me of my innocence. I'll take the synthetics to rehab. We'll deal with them later. One of the Bionational executives told us about Stevens after all the shit came down. You won't have to worry about those bastards any- Damn it, listen to me. Arona transmitted a message about detonation just before he died. You have to stop it! There may be another way. We've suspected the existence of other sentient beings since the Nostromo mission. It doesn't change things. The aliens have won, Corporal. Basic military tactics. When you're outgunned, you retreat, and you leave nothing for your enemy. Jesus! You haven't heard anything I've said! There's still a chance if you deal with it. They, they don't want to stop it. What? It's only a matter of time before the aliens overrun us. We've got to deal with the reality of the situation. Arona understood. The alien attack isn't evil, it's opportunity. Earth's been on the brink of destruction for decades. There's no discipline, no order. The aliens only exacerbated the situation. It would have came to this sooner or later. It's a chance to clean the slate. A chance to start again. After a few years, when it's over, the survivors can return and terraform the Earth into something beautiful again. Arona understood the aliens have given us a chance to rediscover ourselves. It's a good thing. For the first time since Brim, I laughed. I laughed because the words had lost their meaning. Because that son of a bitch Arona had been right. The aliens didn't destroy us. We did. Sir, there's been a breach of the southern perimeter. Our spotters have spotted hundreds of the... Lock down the ships and prepare for launch. It's time. And what about us? You did what you thought was right. The time for military protocol and polite inquiries are long past. You're like everyone else, still on Earth. Unnecessary. Back away! Report to the pad for launch! Unnecessary, my ass! Just let it end. The way it should have ended on Rem. For both of us. I'm not giving those alien shits the pleasure. And neither are you. I smuggled you aboard the Benedict. And if I've learned one thing about the military is this. They never learn. Wait! We don't have time for this, Newt. This is where they took Bweller. I... Oh, God. What have they done? They destroyed the others. Took what they could salvage. I didn't think you'd come back. Half those ships are automated cargo carriers. No crew. If we can identify a specific... That's it. Deck four. Keep firing, keep firing. You can't let them get to the pad. We can't let... Ah! Ah! I'm still not sure what Hicks was thinking as we climbed aboard the cargo ship. Perhaps he wasn't thinking at all, just reacting as the soldier in him took over. Damn it, hurry! Maybe after all the death and pain, something finally sparked inside him. 
something precious. We got lucky. Most of the cargo job's been retrofitted for total auto operation. This one still has manual controls. Fully pressurized. Atmosphere's normal. Makes sense. Ship's register specifies organic cargo. Hell, it's Noah's happy little ark. His will to live. The aliens have entered the facility. Prepare the ships for launch on my command. Sir, some of the men are still on deck. Marking final. I'm proud of every one of them. Now prepare for launch or I'll have you shot. I could hear gunfire and screams as the aliens advanced on our ship. The sounds of a planet dying. The automatic launch sequencers locked, and the whines of the ship's engines drowned out the horror below. We were leaving Earth to the aliens and Arona's opportunity. I suppose I should have cried, felt something for those we left behind. I'd run out of tears long ago. And then it spoke to me. Something exploded, bright like a million suns. I can see. Newt, what's wrong? It had changed since the homeworld. It took me a moment to fully comprehend. Ah! Uh. It understood about Arona. It knew his twisted plan. We thought it shared our thirst for vengeance. We led it to Earth for the mistaken belief it might want to help us. But how could we have been so blind? It shared so many of our mercurial human emotions. Hate. Anger. The desire to conquer. It no longer cared about the aliens. Interest had shifted. The soldiers assumed that they would return one day and terraform the Earth for themselves. It would watch. It would be waiting for them. It just wanted me to know. The cargo vessel's navigational computers were locked onto a deep space trajectory. The gravity drive pulsed like a living thing, propelling us across billions of miles of space. Hicks finally had his revenge but he found no satisfaction in it. When it began, he blamed his misery on the aliens. Now all he could blame was himself. I was standing at one of the viewports staring into space. The light from the stars stretched around the ship like a glowing white neon. But this time, it was different. I wasn't alone anymore. And maybe, finally, that was all that mattered. Hey guys, if you like this video, please give it a like and a comment. It really helps the channel and I love to read through them. And subscribe so you can keep up with all the uploads. Also, please consider becoming a Patreon. The support helps me make more time to make more videos and upload more often. The link is in the description. If a monthly donation doesn't suit your interest, consider giving a one-time tip to my PayPal. Link is also in the description. Thank you for watching. Till the next time.